Hi, I'm Simon and I work on the platform team here at Facebook. I thought it'd be worth taking your time to understand what the Open Graph is and why we built it. And to do that, you have to go back to how Facebook was when we launched about eight years ago. The very first thing we did is we put identity on the web, users' names and their profile pictures. And the next thing we did was allow users to connect to each other in the social graph, relationships between their friends. And then in April 2010, we launched the first version of the Open Graph. And this allowed people to build out their identity, who they are, by liking objects all over the web. So you could like a movie, you could like a sports team, you could like a TV show. And millions and millions of people built out their identities on Facebook by liking. But like doesn't quite cover everything. I don't just like a movie. I watch a movie or I rate a movie. And so what we launched in September 2011 is the next version of the Open Graph. And that allows you to connect to any object on the web in any way you want. So I don't just have to like a movie now. I can watch a movie. I can read a news article. I can listen to a song. And I can eat at a restaurant. I don't just have to check in there or like the restaurant. And that is the power of the Open Graph. And now, what that allows people to do is build out their identity, who they are, on Facebook. But to do that in a way that's meaningful with all of this Open Graph data, we had to redesign Facebook. And what we came up with was Timeline. And Timeline is the story of your life on a single page. It's who you are. But it's not just pictures of where you've been, your friends, your status updates, and where you've checked in. With the Open Graph, my timeline is full of tons more stuff. Because I use Spotify, which is connected to the Open Graph, now on my timeline is the music I like, my top artists and top playlists. Not because I went around and liked them, just because I listened to songs in Spotify. Likewise, if I'm particularly into food, instead of just saying, posting a particular status update says, oh, I ate here, this was awesome. If an application like food spotting is connected to the Open Graph, as I use food spotting, the food I eat and the restaurants I go to and the people I'm with make up my identity and they go right on my timeline to build out who I am on the web. But the Open Graph isn't just a story about building out a user's identity through the web and growing your application. Open Graph is one of the first things Facebook launched, which is, by its very nature, completely cross-platform. So you can publish actions to the Open Graph from native apps, iOS and Android, or others, mobile web, and desktop web. But not only can you publish to the Open Graph from all of those platforms, as you use Facebook on those platforms too, we'll give distribution back to your application on those platforms too. What this means is I could be using uh, Pinterest on the web, on my desktop computer, a friend of mine could be using Facebook on their iOS app, uh, the Facebook's iOS app. They could see a story for me using Pinterest. They click it, and they end up using Pinterest's iOS app, not their web version. So we're driving distribution to Pinterest's apps as well as their product on the web. So the best way to uh, see this in action is to take an example. So this is SoundCloud, who are a German-based audio service. Uh, they kind of uh, liken themselves to, I guess, being the YouTube of sound. Uh, so you can upload sounds and share them and play them and all that kind of stuff. It's a very cool app. So they looked at building their product and publishing to the Open Graph. And so what they decided to do was pick the actions and objects that people do most frequently in SoundCloud. So the actions they launched with are playing a sound, liking a sound, posting a sound, which is when you upload it. And because SoundCloud is social by design, following a user, and even joining a group. So when I use SoundCloud on any platform, from their desktop web app, www.soundcloud.com, from their mobile website, m.soundcloud.com, and then from their iOS app, their Android native app, and even from their OS X app for Mac, whenever I use SoundCloud on any of those platforms, they're publishing actions to the Open Graph. And then when users see those stories in Facebook, we're driving traffic back to SoundCloud on any one of those platforms. 
So let's quickly go through when you publish to the Open Graph, what happens inside Facebook and how we drive distribution. So the web is the most uh, probably, probably the one you're the most familiar with. When you publish an action, Simon liked a sound on SoundCloud. And they published this via the API. So this is a story that appears in Newsfeed, and it also appears in the tickers of my friends as well. And then there's timeline. And when I uh, publish actions to Facebook, they appear on my timeline in aggregations. So here's an aggregation of the activity I performed on SoundCloud, and it's the sounds I like. And once again, you can see the same action appearing there on timeline. And all of this is from a single post, a single action being published. Any app that publishes to my timeline also gets a view on my timeline all of its own. And we call those timeline app views. And this is uh, my view of SoundCloud. This is all the activity I've performed on SoundCloud in all time, just on my timeline. And this is a click away at the top of my timeline. And again, you can see another aggregation shown here. It's the same sound that I liked previously. So that's some of how it appears on the web. But it's more than just the web. Imagine if I or one of my friends is using the Facebook native iOS app. And in on my timeline or in the newsfeed, they see a story. Simon liked a sound on SoundCloud. Now, if SoundCloud have set this up correctly, which they have, if I click on that and I have the SoundCloud native iOS app installed, then we'll multitask over to the SoundCloud native app, pass them the details about the object in question, and then SoundCloud show that object straight away and it starts playing. It's a really awesome experience. And if I don't have face, uh, SoundCloud's native iOS app installed, we'll actually take them to the App Store to download the SoundCloud native iOS app, and then they can continue to install that on their device and play the sound. So we're actually driving distribution to SoundCloud's native iOS apps too. This also works for Android and the mobile web. If I'm using uh, Facebook uh, on m.facebook.com on any platform, and I see the same story, I click on it, and I end up at SoundCloud's mobile website. And again, the sound plays, and they publish an action. It's an awesome experience. We're actually going to be launching the ability for you to deep link into native Android apps as well.